we're here in Tokyo, Japan. It's about 10.45 and the goal is today over the next 12 hours to try and see as much of this wonderful giant metropolis as we can. The biggest city in the world. I've been here now for maybe three days and so today I decided to do a vlog. Just try and do as much footage as I can, 12 hours, as much as I can see. My plan is to walk maybe 30 kilometers, 20 miles. We'll just see how far we get. The weather's not too bad and so it's all set up perfectly to try and see as much as we can. So yeah, I've been in Tokyo now for three days and I've been blown away by just how incredible this city is. It's so vibrant, there's so much going on. One of the things that I've already learned about this place is that despite it being such a big city, the biggest city in the world, it is so ridiculously quiet and calm. Like Japanese people are so reserved and so you might be in a city that has a population of around 30 plus million. Massive metropolis, but yet it feels like you're in a small town at times because the Japanese people are so calm and quiet. Really fascinating. I've been to a lot of big cities in the world, New York, LA, Bangkok, Delhi, etc, etc. But this place is super unique. Alright, so I've decided the first stop today will be a Tokyo Skytree, as you can see up there. Huge tower, maybe a pretty amazing view from the top, the highest point of Tokyo. So we're going to go up there and see what it's all about. All right, so as we walk into the sky tree, we come across the Kaminaron Gate, which is like something out of ancient Japan. There's a lot of people here. A lot of people, and for good reason. Check that out. I'm getting pretty thirsty but that's not a problem in Japan because in Japan on every street corner you will have a vending machine no matter where it is or where you go and they're not only vending machines they're super cool vending machines with great variety and most of it I don't know what it is I have no idea what that is or that is anyway but um, yeah really awesome so here I'm on the top um, a couple of things about this place Number one, it's actually the tallest tower in the world. I didn't know that until I came up here. So it's the tallest tower in the world. And the tallest observation deck in the world, apparently. That's pretty epic. So that was pretty epic actually, the view was incredible. Um, you can see pretty much the whole of Tokyo up there. It was about 2,000 yen, which is about 18 US dollars. Not too bad a price. All right, so I'm just in an old part of Tokyo called Asakwa. But um, here it's like a really old ancient part of um, Tokyo with lots of shrines and old houses. And it's really like a, a, a entering this ancient Tokyo. I'm here at the Senzoji temple that you can see behind me. I'm gonna go and check that out. Now what's this down here? Everyone's sort of waving about waving around. Ah. Uh, some cool little shots.
So one of the things that I find so uniquely wonderful about Japan is that all this here is plastic replicas. It's fake food. It's an identical copy of the actual food they make, but they put it in their windows, in, in restaurants and shops to advertise it. Really unique. You can see there that ice cream, the dessert. All plastic. Mm. It's about to go to a sky deck on oh, in uh, Rapongi Hill. It's going to be an amazing view. Not as high as the sky tree, but apparently even better because it's in the central of Tokyo with the sky trees on the outskirts. I think that's up there. All right, so I'm about to go and get the ticket and go up there. I tried to go here twice in the last three days, and both times it's been closed because of the rain. A little bit of rain or wind comes, it closes it down. Health and safety reasons, I guess. So yeah, just in the elevator on my own, going to the sky deck, and I wasn't allowed to take my stick with me, my tripod, or whatever, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing the view. A construction site. <laughs> oh. Ah, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Not too sure what he just said then, but uh, whatever. It's like a helicopter pad. Basically, the sky deck is a helicopter pad that they open up to help tourists see the city. The Tokyo Tower down there. This is actually a better view than the other one because you can see more of the city. It's more in the middle, like I say. Right, so I'm just in what's called Yoyogi Park and I'm um, going towards the main shrine in the whole of Tokyo. So popular tourist place, really really beautiful place, very very spiritual. It's almost dark. The guard was not happy that I came in but he let me in. He said three minutes, three minutes. But it's gonna take longer than three minutes to see this place. Sorry guard. Anyway. Beautiful sunset too, look at that. I think we've made it. Look at this place, beautiful. Really beautiful. Awesome. Truly like ancient Japan, truly. But yeah, what a beautiful place. Just ancient Japan. This is truly like the movies. The trees around the temple, the way it's built. It's like that ancient samurai movie or whatever it is, the ninja movie. Really awesome. All right, now we're gonna head out of this park now and we're gonna go probably to Jinza first. I've not actually been there yet. It's supposed to be the main shopping place. <laughs> I'm not a shopping person, but I wanna go and see what it's all about. This park just sums up what's so amazing about Tokyo. It's a gigantic metropolis, as those videos will show you before from those observation points. With so much going on, so much shops, entertainment, food. But yet, in the middle of Japan you have um, something like this. A really spiritual, almost like an ancient Japanese part with beautiful nature and beautiful shrines. That's what makes Tokyo an amazing city. Just come up to the guard right now who told me, three minutes! Sorry dude, it takes more than three minutes to see a shrine like that. It took about 10 minutes, I had to rush it. <laughs> Hopefully he's cool, he should be cool. Japanese people are very, very, very nice. And uh, making me have a great experience, just how friendly the people are here. Very respectful. All right guys, just arrived in Jinza. We want to explore the shopping district of Tokyo. So what it seems like is just a high-end retail district by the looks of it. This place kind of reminds me of the Fifth Avenue of Tokyo or the Kensington uh, of Tokyo with more lights.
Okay, so what you're seeing here is what they call the Times Square of Tokyo. I mean, I don't think it's imp as impressive as Times Square, but I can see why they compare it. So we're now in Shibuya, which is an awesome place. I love this part of Tokyo. All right, so I'm just at Shibuya Crossing, which is the busiest crossing in the world. Super iconic, super famous. And I'm gonna go and cross in a minute. It's pretty quiet now, because it's about nine o'clock, so it's not as busy as what it will be in rush hour, where there's like thousands of people every time, almost killing each other trying to get in the cross. Let's cross. <laughs> so many people. Shinjenku, which is a super cool part of Tokyo and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Blade Runner or some sort of futuristic sci-fi movie with the neon lights. Look at this over here. This place is wild. <laughs> no city in the world that is lit up as well as Tokyo. I don't think there's any cities in the world. Not even New York. Just amazing neon lights everywhere. It's just all part of Tokyo. Amazing. And up there is Godzilla. Replica Godzilla, of course. Alright guys, so I'm um, back in my suburb of my combination is. That was a long ass day. Uh, 12 hours of continuous walking. Try and see as much as I can of Tokyo. And let me tell you, it's damned hard work. Because the thing is with Tokyo, it's such a big city that it takes so long to get anywhere and I only saw really six different places in 12 hours and my phone tells me that I've walked over 45,000 steps so it's such a big city and it takes so long to be able to just get anywhere anyway, I've got a Fanta grape <laughs> Japanese love these drinks 
and I got some sushi in here. I'm going to eat in about 10 minutes. Uh, also, a good tip here is that if you want Japan to be cheap, buy sushi from 7-Eleven. It's pretty cheap to buy a big pack of sushi. I also forgot to add, I'm now in Tokyo, walking through the middle of the city with a GoPro in my hand, stuck in my face, right? And in most big cities in the world, especially on Tokyo's level, there's always an element of danger. But when you're in Tokyo, when you're in Japan, you kind of always feel safe. And I think that's because, now of course there's always exceptions, but I think in Japan people are just so respectful. It's such a respectful, peaceful culture that you always feel safe, even if it is 12 at night and I'm walking through the middle of Tokyo as a Westerner. Um, but yeah, really, really safe place, really, really cool people and very, very friendly. There we go. Beautiful sushi and cheap as well. Just before I go, I'll just mention one really cool thing that I did on the first day in Japan, and that was I watched sumo wrestling. And a lot of people will want to know, well, how do you do that? There's two ways. The first way is you go and watch them train, and you have to organize that and let them know that you're coming so they can plan for you to arrive. I'm not too sure how you do that, but you can find out. Maybe at your hostel or, or whatever. The second way is if a grand sumo tournament is on when you're there, you can go and watch it, but it is quite expensive. I paid for one day about 130 US dollars, but it was worth it. And here's some videos. And as you can see from there, a really cool experience, the best way to introduce yourself into Japanese culture. But anyway, that's me. I'm going to eat sushi. I'm going to go to bed. Peace out.